I have said it, and let me say it again. What frustrates me about what we do uh, now, our interactions between public and private sector, we always are adopting this touch-and-go attitude, and, and we will never do anything with touch-and-go. No, we're just running around making speeches here, speech there, speech the other place. And we never get time to sit down and listen to the people who actually matter, who are the people we govern, and who are the people who are running this economy, who are yourselves. You know what has happened with this election? And I said it in another meeting, that after the COVID-19 pandemic, now the new pandemic we're dealing with is the pandemic of lies. <laughs> yeah. It is... It's, it's the pandemic of lies. You know, pe people stand up and they say things that they think make sense. You know, I've been looking at politicians, and fortunately I have the opportunity of having served in cabinet. I know how a budget is drawn, and I know how much money we have in our resources to draw a budget. When a political leader, a national leader, tells people, I will put aside $150 billion for market women, I'll put aside... 50 billion for Boda Boda. I'll put aside 100 billion for this. I know how much our budget is and the projected growth of our budget. That time you have not talked about the amount of money that you are taking to counties. You have not talked about transfers for the education sector and so on. Where are you going to get that money to provide that kind of service? You're just lying to those people because you are telling them things they want to hear. And because they won't ask you questions, you just get along with it. You know, when you keep saying this deep state, who is that? And the people are using that phrase and complaining are sitting, are members of the National Security Council. They hold public offices. They tell you they are powerful people. So who is that? You know, this facade and the stories that are being co uh, uh, coined and being bandied around, just so that people create excuses and they camouflage around things that don't exist to survive, or create excuses and pathways of lying and carrying the public along with them. I want to ask you as church ministers, I am your son and as a public servant, we have a country to serve. Let us not be victims of some of these lies that you keep hearing around. But things that just don't make sense even to a fool. How would you tell people? Yeah. How would you stand up? I'm asking you. How, Bishop, how will you stand up in public and tell me, who is that? Uh, and then you, actually you don't even have the courage enough to take a decision and say, okay, because I don't agree with the Attorney General and all these people, me, I'm not going to be party to you. In the morning, you speak like government. In the afternoon, you speak like opposition. <laughs> you see, the question, let's be honest. You see, the total annihilation of common sense and betrayal of common sense in the political practice in this country is shocking. When you tell people about there being a... Who is that? What is that deep state? The Inspector General who seated here? We have passed a constitution that requires us. It's in black and white. You know, even me, if I have to give directions to the Inspector General, the law requires that I put it in writing. And since I became Minister for Interior, I told the nation the other day, I've written two such letters, one to Boynet and one to him, to provide policy guidance. And even before I send it, I ask the Attorney General, does it pass master? The, <laughs> the Attorney General says, under the law, you can't do this. So, stop here, let us proceed. Now, how can you turn around in a country of the amount of freedom that we have? Nairobi, for your record, Bishop, Nairobi houses the largest number of foreign correspondents and media houses on this continent. I've challenged people, if you don't think there's freedom in Nairobi, go and report from Addis. Yeah. With all this freedom we have, in a country where the president is insulted liberally by everybody, by opposition politicians, how would you tell me that there exists a covert dark op element of government that is intended to do certain things. When did you last face and scrutinize and excoriate the Minister for Security? I am here to answer questions. Which is this dark side that exists? Where is it? <laughs> don't, don't, don't be drawn. I'm telling you, don't be drawn to some of this. 
You see, we are unfortunate that we have a brand of leaders. I told you earlier that the narrative we need to be discussing about the future of our country is how we handle corruption and how we create an integrity system of managing our country so that the resources God has given us can benefit our children and our children's children. Now, instead of having that uh, conversation, the artists, the political artists, who want to avoid that conversation, they come up with all manner of excuses. Oh, there are people who hate me called deep state, and you sit with them daily. So when do they become deep? When they are with you or when they are not with you? <laughs> so, look, forget about this. We run an open, transparent, accountable government. Our president, my boss, is probably one of the most liberal and open-minded heads of state on this continent. We are a responsive government. I am not aware. Tell me what you want to know about this government and where you want to go, I take you there. Do you want to go and sit in MC3 in Mutiambai's office and watch the patrol thing? And so on. When you ask questions, we will answer. But you see, to create campaign jargon, you know, this, this story of you must look for a way of creating some level of sympathy so that people can sympathize with you, that you, you are an underdog. So you create some phantom, some fictitious devils <laughs> that are existent somewhere that are against you. And these devils are not described. So you use some communist type language and call them deep state. And say, you know, these people, they may be having the state, but we have God. God is for all of us. You can't have God yourself. <laughs> so, Bishop, forget about this thing, my brother. Let's just go forward and build our country. Let's just, that's what exist. Secondly, secondly, and that's why I say thank you for asking me this question, because I never, never get this opportunity to respond to these things. <laughs> So I tell you what I think. I mean, if I wasn't before religious leaders, I would have even used a stronger language. <laughs> because this is petty, it's empty, there's nothing, it's hollow. People are just loitering around saying things that don't exist. Let them deal with issues. You know, I keep telling people, these elections are like an interview. You leaders have conducted interviews before, haven't you? So when I come before you, you tell me, eh, Fred, good, you want this job, yes. Where have you been? I tell you, I was headmaster there, I was this. They ask, you ask me, what did you do when you were there? How did you handle the students? What did happen? And so on. People are running around here who have held public responsibilities. They are not accounting for what they did when they were holding those public responsibilities. You are the religious leaders. The story of talent is in the New Testament. What did you do with the ones I gave you first before you come for more? Now, yeah. Now they are lying. Yeah. They are moving around and saying, Oh, you know me. As you know, please sympathize with me. There is a certain dark group of people called Deep Step who hate me. They don't like me. They don't want me to be a leader. They plot evil against me. You drive public money in that state, you eat food bought by that public state that you are condemning, you, you live in a house of that state, when does it become deep and deeper than you? Forget about these jokes. Finally, you asked me, so I'm just responding to Anne's question. You asked me, are we okay if the president is involved? You know, sometimes I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Where do we live? We, we have to choose what we want. Do we want democracy or autocracy? We say, okay, we are a democratic institution. When did the president lose his democratic rights? So that he's supposed to keep quiet because you are president, see no evil, hear no evil, say nothing. 
You are president. You, you. Yeah, you, you. When you try to say, we tell you, no, 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 you, you are president. Keep quiet. So, don't say anything. And you, you are not supposed to share with anybody. You are not supposed to tell anybody. I have not had my boss, our president, anywhere in this country, both in private and in public, telling anybody, this is a presidential decree. You must go this way. I've never heard him say such things. The president speaks like the leader of our people. Like we expect all leaders to speak. In my view, this is what I think I would like would happen to our country. And you have the democratic to, right to agree or disagree with him. And nothing will happen to you by the way you disagree with him. And nothing will happen with you if you agree with him. That's the country we are building. You saw President Obama before he left office on the campaign trail for the Democratic Party candidate. Did that happen or it did not happen? That is the, supposed to be the icon of democracy in the world. I mean, you have seen presidents who are leaving office on the campaign trail for their successors and so on. The president is expressing his view to gag the president and say now, you see sometimes I wonder, one group of society is saying, our president is our leader, he should therefore guide us. Then he wakes up in the morning, he says, okay, good people, me, I think this is the way we should go. Another group comes and says, no, 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 shut up, you, you are president, don't talk to us. It doesn't work like that. Let's be, allow me please to use this phrase, let's not be pretentious. Let's be honest to each other. And let us not sacrifice common sense on issues like this. Everybody can express themselves. We are in a free society. Sasa to jenga injie to jamani. Na to shirikiane. His way to means well. When he says, he doesn't tell us, oh, from today I have decreed. I've never heard him say that. Ya, anasema, mimi kwa maoni yangu vile naona. This is how it's... And you know, by the way, if he never gave any maoni, we'll also wonder, this one, he doesn't have a view about how we should go. And then now he's playing, he's carrying the burden of leadership. As a leader, I have led you for 10 years now. I thank God for the opportunity. I've made my contribution. This is where I think I've moved the country to. And in my view, this is how I suggest we proceed. What is the Kiswahili teacher? What is his name? Or her name? Mrs. 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 Kasingo. Mm. Where is Mrs. Kasingo? She is away uh -huh. today in the yeah. convention. Uh -huh. She has a sick month. Uh -huh. mm. All right. Okay, no problem. Um, very good. And where is the biology teacher? What is his name? I beg your pardon, what's his name? Mr. Lambo. Second class without a teacher. No, it's okay. A second class without a teacher. Let me see your textbook. How many of you have got textbook? Biology textbooks. Let me see them. Just raise them up. Those who have biology textbooks. So, so you guys don't have the text. There is no teacher in class right now teaching biology. They have eight textbooks and there are 45 students. All right? I thank the Lord that I have had an opportunity in the last seven years to serve my country in the position of a cabinet secretary. During the seven years, I have also had an opportunity to learn a lot about our country, and work with fellow Kenyans, and face tough times and tough decisions. And so, if there's anything I've learned the last seven years I've been in government, is that we could do a lot, a lot more than we are doing, if we actually addressed some of the challenges we have in leadership. We have very serious weaknesses in our leadership. Sometimes in our environment or even in our countries, we 
I honestly think we spend too much time on politics, more time than we should. And, and this hurts the potential that we have to do great things. I do not know who cast us, but I don't know why we sleep and wake up thinking about things that could not move us to the next level, you know, like uh, belongings, you know, where we come from, who we are, and half the time we are lost in debates on pettiness, and we lose sight of the big things that we need to do that could unlock our potential and cause us to succeed. And you know there are people who hold positions to this day, elected, who don't have degrees. You know that very well. You live in Kenya as I do. You know, people launder themselves around. How do you go to court for a judge to determine whether or not you went to school? <laughs> you know? How, how can I turn up in court for a judge to determine whether or not I went to school and whether or not I have a degree? That's the kind of country we live in. Country and enjoy as fast a internet as I can get in any city in Europe. There is no reason why we shouldn't. Because we are building infrastructure and, and migrating from analog to digital broadcasting provides us an opportunity to avail more spectrum to enable our you know, our mobile telephony, to enable our broadband uh, footprint to expand in the country. This is why we need to migrate. And surely time is here for us to do it. Exactly, the Deputy President, who is also the presidential candidate for the United Democratic Alliance, UDA, made four allegations yesterday in his statement. One that the government and its senior officials have mobilized to campaign for Asimula Omoja, uh, one Kenya Alliance presidential candidate. Two, that the national government administrative officers, especially chiefs and their assistants, are being mobilized to rig next week's general elections.